So I started full-time work three months ago and every three months at work for security reasons, you have to change your password. But do you ever get into that moment where you're doing your password over and over and over and once you have your password installed for a certain amount of time, it just becomes muscle memory. You don't even have to think about what your password is. You're literally just typing away on your keyboard or on your phone or whatever and your, your phone or your computer magically unlocks because you just type your password and it just unlocks. And we don't really think about what the password is. We just kind of know, our fingers and our brain just know, okay, it needs to go there, there, need to click shift, click the special key, click the asterisk or whatever. To unlock your pass, to unlock your computer, unlock your device or whatever. And this was happening at work again and again and again, and I wasn't really thinking about it, but then all of a sudden I had to change my password after three months. And then I changed my password, and then the muscle memory is still reacting from my pe previous password. And I keep on getting my password wrong, and I keep on getting my password wrong again, and I keep on getting my password wrong again. And what was happening was my brain was recalling the muscle memory from the old password. And what I realized is that when people learn things and when people apply skills that they learn to certain tests, what happens is the muscle memory kicks in for those low level or easier tasks. Easier relative to the person's difficulty. So for example, when you're doing just basic addition, let's say three plus four, six plus six, you have to do this as part of certain steps for your larger working out, maybe in year 11 or 12 or whatever when you're doing maths. And those steps you don't really think about, but you're more thinking about the more complex steps in that problem. It's because your muscle memory is kicking in to do those low level, easier problems or easier parts of the problem. And then your brain is more actively thinking about how to answer those harder questions. Now, this is not, purely because you have easier things versus more difficult things because easy and difficult are subjective to the person and subjective to the context. Now, if you're, if you're in prep or year one and you're learning these basic additions and multiplications, then it's not muscle memory at that point because you're just learning it and you have to think about, okay, I have three on this finger and then I add two on the finger and then I add another two on the other hand, then that adds up to seven. And that's three plus four is equal to seven. The students who are learning that for the first time in prep or year one or year two, they're actively thinking about how to actually solve those problems. But when we're in year 11 or 12, relative to our current skill level, those things are easy. So we resort to muscle memory. So what I realized was anything can actually become muscle memory. It's just a matter of relative difficulty to us. So the reason why we're able to solve these basic additions and multiplications using muscle memory is because we've practiced it so many times over and over again, all the way from when we learned it when we were five or six or seven years old, all the way up until now. So the point I'm trying to make is that you can make whatever you want seem like muscle memory. But the thing is, people don't go through the repetition enough during year 11 or year 12 to make it muscle memory. They expect everything to be done actively. But the problem with that is when things are always done actively, then it requires not only more brain power, but also more time to actually compute and comprehend. So what happens is that when you're doing a test and the test timing is already you know, tight as it is, you're not, you're not saving time by resorting to muscle memory to do these basic tasks. So for example, if you look at a, a mock exam one for VCE methods and you see that the difficulty gets easier to more difficult as you go through the test, maybe the first one is done through muscle memory. Maybe the first one's not done through muscle memory. But then for the top students, what they do is they're allowing themselves through repetition to answer questions, to answer more of the questions through muscle memory rather than relying on active brain effort. Now, if we go back to the entering the password example or the entering the password analogy, why entering the password gets easier over time and we don't think about it and we resort to muscle memory is purely through just constant repetition. So if you have the same mindset when it comes to answering questions in VCA methods or just any VCA subject in general, then you'll be able to answer so many questions based on muscle memory and it'll just be second nature, it'll just be instinct. And 
it doesn't necessarily result in more mistakes because you're not thinking about it as actively. It's purely because the neurons are already firing in your brain that you didn't even know existed and you don't have to resort to your active thinking to actually answer these questions. But it makes sense if you get to a harder application and you haven't really seen those types of questions before, then those are the times or those are the moments in the test or the exam where you actually have to resort to your own thinking because those questions are just never seen before. And that's the point of mathemat mathematical methods, or calling the subject VC methods. It's the fact that you're focused more on the method to answering a question rather than just getting all the answers right. So that's why in VC methods, the last questions are always the most brutal and the most difficult. And students will say, oh, I've never seen that concept before. How can they expect me to answer that question? The point is that you're focusing on a method that you've learned, but you're just applying it to a completely new context. But not all the questions are like that. The more extreme questions are like that, but the easier ones, the ones that are question one, two, three, four on an exam one, those are the ones that are kind of, you consider low hanging fruit and you can just answer them <clears throat> with relative ease. And those are the ones that you would want to resort to muscle memory to answer because you can just get them out the way. You can usually get them right if you understand the process and you can just apply your skills straight away. And you can resort and save your thinking time for those ones later down the track, maybe question nine or 10 or 11 in a exam one. Those are the ones that you want to be spending more time focusing on. And that's why I tell my students and tell everyone as general advice, you should start off with the harder questions if you can. And this is particularly good advice for exam two. You can dedicate your, maybe I should make a whole another video on this, but you should dedicate your reading time just to look at the extended response questions because they're the ones that require the most amount of thinking and you can't resort to muscle memory to answer them because they're just completely new concepts in outrageous application contexts. And then you should go straight into answering them because it's fresh in your mind. But then when it comes to some of the multiple choice and the easier questions in exam two or in the extended response of exam two, then those you should be resorting to muscle memory with. So. The point is that you should be maximizing the amount of questions that you can answer by using muscle memory. And if you just go through, if you literally right now go to the VC website and go through all the old exams, or just go through any old exam, you'll notice that question one, question two, question three, they're usually either easy probability questions or really easy differentiation or integration questions. For example, it might be a really easy chain rule question that's worth one or two marks. And then it might be evaluate the derivative at x equals two for a certain function. So you're forced to find the derivative using product rule and then substitute it into x value. So those questions are pretty easy. And if you look at the distribution of marks, there's probably 60 to 70 people, of 60% or to 77% of people or students getting them right. So I was just mumbling my words there. But it shows that just based on those percentages, a lot of students are already getting it right. And might, maybe a lot of them are using muscle memory to get there. But what you want to be doing is maximizing the amount of questions that you're using muscle memory to answer in order to save you the most amount of time possible and save you the most amount of brain fatigue. Now, this is actually easier said than done because if you think about it, muscle memory in just cases in your life doesn't kick in until a long while or over a, a certain amount of repetitions, but that amount of repetitions is actually very high. I literally just ran into a bush. See, my muscle memory, that's actually not purposeful at all, but my muscle memory didn't recognize his path and didn't know that there's a bush there. So therefore I just ran into the bush. It's because I haven't walked along this path enough. That is actually not a coincidence at all. But my example was meant to be that even for myself, I changed my password two weeks ago, probably entered my password in you know four to five different times throughout the day. And so that's probably in the ballpark, whatever, 100 times I've entered in my password. No, not 100 times. Probably like, I don't know, 25 to 30. But do you really do 25 to 30 questions of each specific type in VC methods? I mean, the answer is probably no. And what that means is you're not doing enough repetition of certain topics in order to kick in the muscle memory. Because it's one thing to actually learn the topics. I'm just gonna get out my other flashlight so that I don't run into this bush again. But it's one thing to actually know the content actively, but it's another thing to actually build up your muscle memory in order to answer the questions properly. Now, I'm not saying that, again, 
I think I already said this before, but I'm not saying that you should be aiming to answer the whole test based on muscle memory. I'm saying that you should be able to answer those low hanging fruit type of questions with muscle memory in order to not only save time, but also reduce the amount of brain fatigue that you actually go through during a test. And what you may notice with a lot of the advice that I give is it seems overlapping. So I'm talking about muscle memory and in order to develop your muscle memory, you need to do a lot of repetitions. And in order to become a master in general when learning things and to be able to, to build up those neurons in your brain, you have to have muscle memory as well. And that is only through, no, sorry, you don't have to have muscle memory. You have to be able to do a certain amount of repetitions or you need to do a certain amount of repetitions in order to actually memorize something and to learn something. But I'm just putting the GoPro down. But the thing is, it's not because one of these methods or all of these methods actually help you develop your skills. It's because when you're doing one, you're doing them all. So for example, when you answer more questions, you're increasing your repetition. When you're increasing your repetition, you're not only learning the things better, but you're also developing your muscle memory. You're also developing your confidence. You're also developing your, just, your general experience in different types of questions and different types of applications. So it's not to say that doing repetition just causes one thing. It's that doing repetition and doing exercises and keep on repeating the same thing over and over is not beating a dead horse and not only getting you one thing. It's building up all of these different facets that actually contribute towards your year 12 success. So don't take my advice as one input, one output. It's multiple inputs and multiple outputs that result in your VC success because you can do X amount of repetitions and that might not get you exactly where you want to be in terms of your, your knowledge, but it'll definitely develop your confidence, especially if you're seeing fruitful scores out of it. And it'll definitely develop your confidence as well. And it'll definitely develop your muscle memory too. So when you do these things, but when you just take any advice, this is just a gen general piece of advice, but when you take any advice from anywhere else, not just from me, but just from anyone else, you have to consider that you're getting more than one thing out of it. And if you don't achieve that one thing, then it's not necessarily that you just wasted your time because you developed, you developed somewhere. It just, you might not know it. So again, you could develop your actual knowledge in terms of something. You could develop your expertise in terms of different applications that have been tested in the past. You develop your confidence and you also develop your muscle memory as well. And there's probably so many other things that I can't really think of at the top of my head, but they're definitely out there.